There we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Harbor Community Meeting. Today, we've got two demos uh, that we want to show off. The first one is by Kian Deng. Um, do you want to start off? OK, thank you. Jonas. Let me share my screen. Oh, can you see my screen now? Yep. Okay. Uh, 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 today, uh, hello everyone. Today I will uh, show you the demo of distributed tracing. And uh, for more background, you can uh, check the proposal of distributed tracing in GitHub. And uh, you can also watch some uh, recordings of uh, our previous mini apps. So let's get a start today's demo. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, we uh, added some configuration item in the config file of Harbor. Uh, it's related to tracing, and we call it a trace. And uh, uncomment uncomment these configurations and uh, set as enable to true. And uh, the sample rate. The sample rate means uh, uh, one means a uh, hundred percent of the tracing data were collected by the backend, and uh, uh, if you only wanna uh, sampling half of the data, so you can set it to zero point five, and uh, set it to zero. Uh, it means never tracing, and. Uh, the namespace, uh, you, you can add the namespace if you want. And uh, this is, uh, if you set the namespace, you can use in the namespace and the service name to differentiate different ap applications. And the attribute is uh, uh, the attribute you want to add to the tracing data. And uh, for example, if you're using some uh, third party uh, tracing service like Wavefront, it, it uh, wants you to set this item. So if you're using this kind of service, you can add it uh, to, you can add the attributes here. And uh, the exporter uh, service, the, the tracing service backend, uh, we, uh, we add, oh, we suppose two of them. One is Jiger, and the other one is uh, Otel. And the Jiger is uh, the popular. I think is a very popular and a great uh, uh, tracing backend, and is also a CNCF project. And we can um, we can export data to Jiger directly, and we can also uh, in uh, export our tracing data using OTEL protocol and uh, using this protocol and uh, you can leverage the other uh, open telemetry component we call the uh, uh, open telemetry collect and uh, it will consume this kind of data and uh, export the data to uh, I, I think almost all the um, uh, tracing service. Okay, let's get started. We, first we will demo uh, export the data to Jiger. And uh, like uh, the configuration here, we set a Jagger in the point and uh, mm, let's, let's start our stories. As you can see, the Hubble service is uh, getting started. It is getting started, and uh, uh, be because the we enable the trace, so at the same time, the tracing data is uh, sent to the uh, Jiger. Let's say the Jiger UI. Okay. Uh, as you can see, and we added the uh, the. Because we added the HTTP, uh, we traced all the HTTP requests and 
And uh, in Hubble, we have a health check uh, in all components. And uh, as you can see from this trace data, you can see we using Hubble, the Hubble uh, use HTTP get method to request the uh, uh, register, con uh, register control and with the API has. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, I think oh, uh, in, in this, uh, in next release, we just uh, enable the three component is uh, to, of the tracing and uh, one is Hubble core, the other one is uh, uh, Hubble job service and the last one is Hubble register control. And as we can see, both of them have the tracing data here. So this one. And then let's do some more complicated job uh, like uh, replication. I added uh, this uh, replication job here is uh, uh, throw the image data from Docker Hub uh, to our Hubble and run it. Uh, as you can see, uh, all the because the replication job is started from the job service and it uh, started some backend tasks and to uh, replicate the jobs, you can see it uh, push which is the data, all the layers data to <coughs> our core and from the, uh, from the Jaeger data uh, dashboard, you can see every request of the Hubble service. And for example, uh, there, if, if there are some errors, you can also fi find uh, here. This this is because the page or the head request written the four four four. So you can say arrow here, and uh, it's very convenient for people debugging the distributed service. And uh, let let us uh, I have another Hubble running and which using. the open hotel protocol like this. And uh, as you can see, uh, we can also export it using this protocol. And uh, from this service, uh, on this server, you can uh, see the open service, uh, open timing hotel protocol. Uh, using the hotel collector, we can consume the hotel protocol uh, and uh, export. Oh, sorry. Exporters means the export service. Uh, we can also explore using Jaeger. We can also using other service which supports hotel like uh, Tanzo observability. And uh, as you can see, uh, I enable it here, and uh, we can send the data to uh, ten uh, with uh, wave from which is Tanzo observability proxy, and uh, it also running on this server. So. As you can see here, we can, this is a uh, tender observability. We can collect the, uh, it also can consume the data sent from the Hubble. Yeah, it from the request, uh, it can uh, draw the service graph here. Uh, because we just enable the three components, so there are three only three components here. Okay, I, I think uh, this all my today's demo. Is there any question here?
This is great. Thank you. Um, which parts were you, uh, did you say were going to be in the next release of Harbor? Uh, uh, so, so probably, uh, you, you mean what, what uh, component that enables the Hubble tracing, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, only three components, uh, the Hubble core, Hubble job service, and the Hubble register control. I think uh, these three components is the most important one. Uh, uh, the Hubble core, every request will uh, pass through the Hubble core and uh, all the backend uh, tasks are running uh, from the job service. And uh, some, mm, uh, the uh, register control is related to GC. And uh, we, because we have some, uh, mm, Issue uh, using this, we can mo monitoring the process of the GC process. <laughs> I think awesome. this is a, okay. thank you. Then, uh, if I want to uh, trace the distribution component, so I, I have to modify the source code to enable the JAPA support, right? Yeah, yeah. I I already uh enabled the industry components. If you wanna tracing the functions or other other things, you can uh, add the tracing points in your code. For example, you can add some data. You can add some logs of this the tracing, and uh, you can also add some more informations. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Any any more questions for Ken? All right. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have another question about the trace. Uh, I saw you uh, conflict the endpoint in the uh, upper YAML, right? So, uh, so uh, for the system I admin, mean, there, there's no chance for them to update their uh, Jaguar endpoint. On, on the online, they have to restart hardware to make the config. Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, Be because uh, uh, you 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 are always uh, you, you, you if if you want to start or uh stop the tracing, you need uh, uh restart the hardware. But there are just some other solutions. For example, you can always expose the hardware trip. Hubble data and using uh, uh, another component uh, uh, like uh, the open telemetry collector and uh, using that component to control uh, if to uh, send the data to the backend. So if you're using the third component, you, um, you will not uh, stop your service. Okay, I'll pass it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, so with that, thank you again, Kian, for uh, the demo and answering all the questions. Uh, next up, we're going to move over uh, on to Sheng Wen. All right. Uh, thank you, Jonas. And uh, today I will be representing some um, uh, stop scanning future and demo. And uh, in here, uh, actually, there are two scenarios. One is to stop single scan job of a, of a given artifact. And the other one is to stop scan all job. Just to make, uh, to give you guys some background, in this demo, um, I will use a fake scanner, or use a fake scanner to uh, mark the scanning activity. And each scan job is set to take 20 seconds to um, do the scanning activity. And this gives us some time buffer to click a, a scan but to stop scan button. Let me oh, okay. Let me show you the the um, scan button here. This we use a fake as I said before. When we use a fake scanner to set uh, for this per, for to mark the scanning activity and. Uh, in that fake scanner, we said each scan job is taken to is taken twenty seconds to finish the scanning job, 
And that gives us some time buffer, approximately 20 seconds to click this stop scan job, uh, to click this stop scan button here. And, uh, uh, and therefore to terminate a currently running scan job. And uh, let me show you guys the, uh, the scanner I'm, I will set to uh, for this demo. And, uh, and I put a few artifacts to this demo environment. And uh, when I click, uh, and the vulnerabilities here, if like uh, no vulnerabilities, um, before because I do I did I did some practice before to to prepare for this demo. Uh, normally it will be not scanned, right? But either way, if I click uh, scan and then stop scan, the vulnerabilities here will be stop scan. It will not be in other status. Mm. Oh, by the way, I also enabled a webhook for uh, stop scanning. Let me show you. The webhook. Uh, I create a, I created a webhook for scanning failed, scanning stopped, and scanning finished. And let me jump to. So, the webhook uh, response request will be received here in this, uh, in this. Uh, um, browser session. And let me click start scan, it's queued. And scanning will take approximately 20 seconds. And let me stop scan and trigger the stop scanning successfully. And the status, the vulnerabilities field is changed to scan stopped. And we can also check the webhook should be there is a webhook for this. Uh, it's triggered at 9.19 p.m. And it's for the NGX image. And that is scanning stopped. And the next is to show you guys stop scanning all, right? And prior to stop scanning all, let me and change the state the vulnerabilities from start from scan stopped to uh, no vulnerabilities because we also want to see um, this will be changed back to stop scanning all uh, will be changed back to st scan stopped when I show you guys the show you guys the the uh, scanning stopped all. It will take approximately 20 seconds. And this is just to make sure we prepare for uh, stop scanning or make sure the vulnerability is, is not scanning stopped because we want to check the vulnerabilities sphere here later on. And, and let me jump. You will also check uh, trigger a webhook for scanning. And completed it, it is not because we just finished the scan, uh, a complete uh, scanning, right? And the so it's time to demonstrate of the stop scanning, stop scanning all. And before to do that, let me show you guys the, the few the few images, they are all uh, no vulnerabilities in this vulnerabilities field. And the other ones are no vulnerabilities as well. And just to, to show you guys, this is no vulnerabilities. And this is no vulnerability, right? And let me go to here to show you guys uh, how to stop scan all. And let me clear this request. Uh, scan all, start scan all. It will take approximately 20 seconds to finish it. Let me stop. It's chance to, to stop scan, right? Let's stop it. They're all stopped. And let's see if there's any webhook being triggered. 
there are four images as, as we saw before, right? And there are four, therefore there are uh, four webhook requests here. One of them is like photon. Next one is Redis. And next one is Nginx. And next one is Alpha. And, and let's double check the vulnerabilities field. It should be, it's changed, right? From no vulnerability to scan stopped, right? And uh, the other one, Redis, is changed from scan, no vulnerabilities to scan stopped. Mm. And uh, let me check Photon, same thing here. And off open, same thing here. And this is essentially how to stop uh, scan scan all. And there's one thing left though, is like I want also want to show you guys how to stop scheduled scale scheduled scan all. Uh, before doing that, that essentially we can do that if like we create a schedule for scan all right here. But before that, let's also prepare for that environment is to do that I scan all to make sure all these uh, all these images is changed from not scanned to uh, to no vulnerabilities because we also want to double check it this vulnerability no this vulnerability field from no vulnerability to stop scan if not. Right. Let's prepare for this. Uh, for this uh, test purpose, the success, and so we essentially we just need to, to make sure there are, there are no vulnerabilities because we want to check this later on when we stop them. They should be. They should be. Uh, uh, again, stopped. And I just checked two of them, right? The other ones should also be no vulnerabilities as well. No vulnerabilities. No vulnerabilities. And uh, once once we did a stop scan all for scheduled scan all, it should be changed from no vulnerabilities to stop scanned, right? So to do that, uh, let me just create a schedule schedule job for that. Uh, This essentially means every minute run this scan all job, right? And uh, they're all success. Uh, if right now it's like 9.26, let's save this. Uh, you know, approximately one minute, it should trigger a scheduled scan all job, right? Let's refresh it. And let's wait for, for a few seconds. Because this schedule is not triggered at this moment. And let's wait for other a few a few seconds. Okay, this schedule drop is running, currently running, and let's click it. And click it, and also want to change it back to now because we don't want it to run again to overwhelm our webhook. Let's see the webhook. There is a scanning stopped, right? Scanning stopped, scanning stopped, scanning stopped for 
because we have four images. Uh, Redis, Nginx, and Photon, and uh, Open, right? The stop scanning stopped. And uh, let's double check the vulnerabilities field. And for Nginx, um, it is scan stopped, right? And for Redis, is scan stopped if before it was uh, no vulnerability, right? And for photon is scan stopped. And for open is scan stopped. So essentially that basically is how stop single scan job and the stop scan all job works from, uh, from user experience. Essentially, we have a uh, stop single scan job for of a given artifact and scan and uh, stop scan all for manually triggered and stop scan all for scheduled uh, for scheduled scan all jobs. And that's essentially my uh, short demo for this stop scan job feature. And right now I'm happy to take any questions. I have a question. Um, now, can you so switch to the website, uh, webhook.site? Webhook.site, right? Yeah, I want to see the JSON data of the stuff. Uh, I noticed that uh, the operator is R2. So uh, who, who is R2? Oh, okay, you mean this operator should be admin or something? Should be admin, right? Okay, that's a good question. Maybe we should do some change on the code base to make it to admin because the current uh, operator is admin, right? Yeah, thank you for this uh, catcher. And yeah, that's a good question. We may need to change it, uh, make further changes to the code to make it to admin instead of auto, right? Yeah. Uh, I I suppose it should be the operator, the name, the name of the user. Who's the name of, yeah. Instead, instead of auto, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me see if, uh, if, if, if there's anything I can do to, cha to change this operator from auto to admin to, to the current login, logged in user, right? And except to this operator, is there any other? Uh, um, um, other issues you want to raise up? I suppose I have uh, uh, thousands of artifacts. So uh, if I uh, stop uh, scan R in the middle of operations, I should uh, receive thousands of uh, web hooks. <laughs> that's a, that's the, a great uh, question. Yes, I uh, saw this. I, I, I should be a noise for for the uh, like whole system. I I I I believe. Yeah, that's essentially. I uh, when I implemented when I was implementing the webhook for stop scan all. I also think about it, like should we uh, receive um a webhook for every scan job. So in the case of scan all, if there is a thousand scan job for that scan all task, then there will be, there will in in this in, in the current implementation there will be, uh, one thousand webhook requests being sent to the webhook receiver. Yeah, I I think that this this could be discussed. And, um, and, you mean the webhook channel will be overwhelmed by the stop stop scan or webhook yeah. payload? Yeah, so I, I suppose uh, there should be only one webhook for stop scan or just to give the summary summary information about how many is scanned and how many stop like the UI shows. Be then. because yeah, because the webhook is sent. Uh, on a job based, not on a execution based 
So I yeah. uh, so I guess there is barely anything that we could do to make this stop scan all only send one webhook instead of 100 or 1000 webhook requests if there is a 1000 uh, scanning job at the back end. Because the webhook, from my knowledge, like the webhook is like a job based, if not an execution based. So we, I, I, I currently, I, I can't see, I, I can't see there's anything that we can do to change it to the to change the webhook to a job based uh, webhook request. Uh, yeah, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just uh, for, uh, I mean the from the user perspective, the sound yeah. webhook uh, should be a, can be a noise for for my system because I just uh, take one action in in in, in harbor. So, yeah. Um, but um, from the uh, uh, coding perspective, uh, we can discuss all that. I think. Yeah, yeah. If not only scanning stopped issue, if there are one thousand um, jobs at the back end and they are all scanning completed, there will also be one thousand um, scanning completed or scanning finished webhook being sent out, right? Yeah. Yeah, essentially it is because the webhook is like a job based, not an execution based. I see. So yeah, but we can discuss it offline and see if there is anything that we can do to make it happen. Like instead of overwhelming the uh, uh, the webhook channel with all these tons of uh, stop scanned uh, webhook. Yeah, is there any other questions in, for uh, stop scanning feature? All right, that's thank you everyone. And that's essentially my demo for stop scanning feature. And let me hand it to you, Jonas. Yeah, this is great. Thank you so much, Xing Wen. That's all right. Um, does anyone have any other questions or comments for Xing Wen? All right. Uh, does anyone have any other updates that they want to share on the uh, community call today? Any other discussion topics? All right. Then uh, we're done for today. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a fantastic rest of the week and see you all in two weeks. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.